So in this lesson, we're going to take a look at the Steely Dan tune, Josie. Now, Steely Dan tunes are known for their complexity and uh, for all the different chord changes that they have. And really, that ends up with a song that you pretty much have to use the chart to really be able to play to follow along. Uh, maybe once you've played it a bunch of times and have it memorized, it's okay. But, but Steely Dan uh, songs typically have a part that you play. It's not so much of improvising over chord changes as much as it is playing the actual part itself. And that's true with Josie. Now the basic groove in Josie is based around E minor. And it's kind of like a funk jam in the intro. But there are a lot of chord changes around it that make it a little bit tricky. So uh, we're going to take a look at all that. I'll show you how to play the different riffs and uh, then you'll be ready to play that song. Now, before you get into the groove, um, obviously there's the intro of the song, and this is all guitar. There's no bass in the intro. Um, it's just a couple of guitar overdubs together. But then there is a series of chords right before the groove starts, and that's where the bass makes its entrance. Um, to start off with, uh, we start on an F, and we're just going to move up chromatically for these four chords to an A flat. And, uh, well, in rhythm it goes like this. One, two, three, four. And then we're into the groove. So F, F sharp, G, and G sharp. Those are the four roots of the chords. Uh, I, I haven't charted out all the chords because, again, this is just the bass part of the song. The chords are really complicated. Uh, if you had to play them on a guitar, well, then we'd, we'd make sure we'd outline them. But since you're not really improvising over it, um, the chart just reflects the bass notes it's, itself themselves. So F, F sharp. G and G sharp. Then the intro of the groove. Um, well, the, the whole groove in the song is based around uh, E minor and specifically E minor Dorian. So let's take a look at the notes in an E minor Dorian scale. We've got E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D, and E. So, let me play you the intro groove, and you can kind of see how this relates. So let's take a closer look at this. <clears throat> the first note's an E, okay? And then we play the, the sixth degree and the flat seventh degree of the Dorian scale. And then back to the E again. So already we're in Dorian. And then the high part here consists of the G and the E, the minor, um, the, the minor third, the E and the minor third. And basically it's just a chromatic approach to that. And you slide into it. So you're playing two notes at the same time. You start off on the uh, D sharp and let's say an F sharp. And then you slide into the E and the G. It's all part of the Dorian scale. So you do that for four to four times in a row. Repeat that four times. And that's the, the, the intro to the groove. And then we get to the verse. And the verse is... Uh, it has the same groove as the E, that intro section, but the notes get a little bit different. So let me just play, let's say, the first four bars of it, and then we'll break it down. Okay, now at first that looks more complicated, I guess, than, than it really is, <clears throat> so let's break it down. Uh, to begin with, this is just kind of like a pentatonic lick. We play the open E, 
and then you do a grace note from uh, a B flat to a B, like that, sort of hammer on to the B, and then play the D, open D. It's like a pentatonic riff, uh, I'm sorry, pentatonic riff. Like that. And then you play the D and the C sharp. This is the Dorian thing again, flat seven to six. And then we play an E back, the high E back to a low E. So. Then this is a little bit tricky. The next bar on the chart, we start with the low E and we go the low E, the C sharp, the low E, the D, and the low E, or I'm sorry, the high E. So let's put the two together. that. And uh, we're just going back and forth between the low and the high E there. And then we have this extra little bit. It kind of kind of mimics this chromatic thing from up above in the intro. But we're just playing fifths starting on an F sharp to a C sharp. These are both notes that are in the Dorian scale, and then a G and a D. Those are both notes in the Dorian scale, so. Let me put it all together. Now you might want to finger this a little bit differently if it's more convenient for you, like. Than the way I have it fingered in the chart by keeping your hand up here in this position. That way you don't have to move as much. So that's the first four, four bars of the verse. And a little bit tricky, but it's all based around the Dorian scale. And once you get the hang of it, play along with the uh, track, um, you'll get used to how it goes. Okay, so the next four bars are very similar, except they have some new chord changes in them. So the first part is just the same. That much of it. where we get some different notes and these notes are outside of the Dorian scale this is where this is a Steely Dan song the chords get complicated and they actually leave the key center of uh, the song so let's take a look at that again the same and then we go from a D to a D flat to a C then we do a G G flat to an F Oh, I'm sorry, you play it the lower octave. So, here again. And then we're on to the next four bars. So, tricky, lots of changes, lots of different notes. Really, we cover all the chromatic notes uh, all over the neck. We play every note in the scale 
all 12 tones of uh, uh, the scale inside of this one song. So it can be a little complicated. Next four bars. Now here, um, in these four bars, we can see where the chord change goes from E to A. You can at least feel that. We got the E at the beginning. And then we go to an A. And then we have the transition chords. From C to a G to an F. So we'll play that again. fifth and then C G F okay then on to the next four bars that's pretty simple to a G A and then and then F I'm sorry E F and then we go to the chorus. So let's look at that last four bars again closely. We play the riff again. And then we play a G, then an A. Then we play the riff again. F, I'm sorry, E, then F. And then we're moving on to the chorus. So. Before we get into the chorus, let's just review that the whole verse part again. I'll play it slow. somewhat simple deceptively and I'll show you okay so uh, in the last four bars of the verse we play the riff and then we go E F and now the chorus starts F sharp B and we do the same thing again. E, but an octave up, F, F sharp, B. So take a look at that again. Coming into the chorus, we go E, F, here comes the chorus now, and then we do B, then high E, F, F sharp, B, then E, then an open A, then we have this walk up lick. We're going up really kind of the, the, the scale just directly. Starting on an A. B, C, D. And then we go down to the fifth and the octave of that note. And uh, then we go to an F sharp. G and do the same sort of pattern using notes in the key. Like that. So take a look at that again.
it's really um, like a little scale exercise. F sharp, then the high one, and then it's a little ambiguous what exactly he's playing here at the very end of the chorus, but I hear this major walk up back to the E, but it's also possible that he's doing sort of a disco thing. Um, it, it's kind of difficult to hear on the record. But um, so let's take a look at the chorus again. Remember, coming in, we're doing these pickup notes starting from an E, E, F, and now the downbeat of the chorus starts on the F sharp. F sharp, B, E, F, F sharp, B, E, A, and here we go. F sharp, F sharp, and then we got. back to E minor again. <clears throat> now those those ending notes, it, it's a little, again, it's kind of tough to hear. He could be doing sort of like a disco walk up, at least on the second, second time around. I, I hear that. Um, but even might be just that simple. It's kind of hard to tell in the mix. So once you do that walk up, a variation. We have the riff from the verse, just that part, and then we have that little chromatic approach on the minor third up high, but you, you go back and forth on it two times. You don't, you don't re-pluck, you just slide. And it just happens two times. And then you repeat that whole thing. You repeat the verse um, and the chorus again in the same form. It's basically the same. There, there are some variations in the way the, uh, the players made the recordings, but nothing significant. It's, it, it's the same part. Again, Steely Dan tunes are sort of the parts themselves. There's not much improvisation, at least not in the bass. Now, once you've played through the second chorus, we come to the break section. Uh, where this um, little sort of rhythmic thing happens and there's no singing anymore. So the, the break, the melody and the break is kind of with the bass and the guitar playing the same thing together, plus another guitar doing something else. So um, let's see. Um, coming out of the second chorus, instead of the walk-up, you just stay on the B for four quarter notes. We're into the break. So, um, and this is all pentatonic. This is very, very straight ahead. We start on the minor third, the G, and then uh, from the minor third to the fourth, to the A, and then we go from the flat seven to the one, D to E. And then you, uh, just following the box pattern from pentatonic minor, then you have uh, the A and the B down low. So it's more about the rhythm of it. One, two, three, four. It's basically how it goes. that third time around, uh, there's a break and uh, um, another little bass riff. But let's let's back up and take a look at it again. So the first time around in this break section, you play this riff and you rest. The second time around, you play it with an extra little thing added. 
that little part. And then the third time around, you rest again. Then <clears throat> it goes to an F sharp. And that's the riff you play. So it's F sharp. And you go into the fifth of F sharp, which is a B. I'm sorry, C sharp. And then a high F sharp. And using, again, using the box pattern because it's really pentatonic. So we go F sharp, C sharp, F sharp, C sharp again. Then you've got E. And you use a grace note with a hammer on. Very simple. And then we hit a B for a whole note. Then, um, so let me, well, let's take a look at that whole break section again, okay? So coming out of the second chorus, we got four quarter notes on B. verse again and you play the whole verse as written but this time it's a guitar solo but all the parts stay the same bass part stays the same the guitar solo is over top of it instead of singing and you play the whole chorus again just the way it's written but then when you come out of the last chorus you uh now this is the one time when you can kind of improvise i mean there you can listen to the record and see exactly what they play but it's basically a jam um after that last chorus. You can sort of take the pieces and parts from the verse uh, section and rebuild it, but just stay in E. It doesn't change chords or anything. It just sort of hangs out there and they the little saxophone does its riffs and stuff like that, uh, and it fades out. So uh, really at that point, it does become anyone's game if you're playing it live. What do you do with it? Do you just jam on it and end? Um, that's really up to you guys. So now you have all the riffs uh, from all the different parts that you can use in the end to jam on it a little bit. But remember that it stays in E minor. It doesn't change any chords. Um, and since you're using the Dorian scale, you can maybe mess around a little bit and find a way to use the Dorian scale to make your own improvisation.